Good morning from Bobblehead Homestead. I am Jeff. Today is Wednesday and it is sprinkling outside. I don't know what the temperature is. Probably in the 60s. Uh, it rained earlier this morning and now it's raining again. We're supposed to get more rain today and more rain tomorrow. So that's the scoop on the weather. Yeah, I don't know what all that yellowish green stuff is. Uh, is it coming from that oak tree that I showed you in the last clip? It seems like uh, that might be where, where it's coming from. And I think that's an oak tree. Learning all this stuff, but yeah, my entire property is like uh, uh, covered in this yellow green film. Very interesting. Here's some other interesting things. Peaches! Peaches are interesting! The peach tree and oh boy are they, they're all over the place. Yeah, and it just started <laughs> raining. Just started raining again. It rained earlier this morning. Bob, it's raining. Where are you going, dude? Hey, Grumpy. If it's raining, you can't nap outside again, so are you going to be on my bed? He likes to do that when it rains. He'll nap on my bed. That's fine with me today, Grumpy. Fifi does not go into my room, do you, Fifi? Never goes into my room. She'll nap in Fifi's flat, the little uh, cat cabana. Yeah. A couple of great points were made to me after uh, the layout video. One was I had the washing machine and, uh, you know, a potentially a stackable dryer there. And that's not going to work. The dryer, you got a vent outside. That's in the middle, smack dab in the middle of the cabin. So that would not work. I was, uh, you got to remember, a week ago, I, I wasn't even thinking about a dryer. I'll put my clothes out on a clothesline and, you know, I'm using what I have. So, uh, uh, yeah, so I hadn't even, a dryer, you know, a clothes dryer was not a higher priority for me a week ago than, like, say, a dishwasher. So, anyway, that's not going to work. And then the the whole idea here was to have all the water on an internal wall that would help against freezing. Not that freezing is a big problem down here, uh, but that was the whole idea to make hopefully make it cheaper. So you're not running uh, need uh, need water over here and water over here on the complete other side of the cabin. So those are some of the things that I uh, took into consideration. But washer-dryer combo right there would not work. Um, also, the water heater um, in, under the cabinet in that space. I think one of those low-profile ones would work. Yes, tankless water heaters. Um, yeah, let's talk about that for a second. It's raining. I hate filming in my room, but here we go. Tankless water heaters. Lots of suggestions about those. I've never had one. I don't think I've ever been anywhere that used them. I don't know. Um, what I do know is mostly f what I've learned from the Shed to House Facebook group. I will put a link to the Shed to House Facebook group down below. If you just type tankless in the search box for that Facebook group, <laughs> tankless water heaters. Um, some people love them, some people hate them, some people have had problems with them, propane versus the electric. A lot of people really love the propane, the electric, not so much, and it's just uh, mixed reviews. That's what I can say about the tankless water heaters. Um, also, you know, the, the low-end brands are very much different from the higher-end brands, especially when it comes to pricing. Uh, Ecotemp, 
is uh, one of the you know the better ones, and there that's going to be more than a, a regular like 30 gallon uh, water heater. Uh, Reem, uh, Rene, Renai, however you say that one, uh, fifteen hundred bucks, uh, six. You know, you're talking six hundred dollars up to fifteen hundred dollars uh, for the ones that are reliable, good, blah 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 blah. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I just have not seen enough positive reviews on the on the cheaper models for me to uh, consider that for everyday use shower sink blah 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 um <laughs> yada 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 one of the interesting things about the uh tankless electric water heaters uh that i learned was their uh their need for electricity you think of them as more efficient over a year but um uh, in a split second, they take a surge of electricity to heat the water when it's on demand. Uh, think of a microwave versus an oven. You know, a microwave is there. It's usually a big burst of electricity um, versus an oven, which is using low and slow. So that uh, that that's a comparison. So electric water heaters will most of them will need access to three 40 uh, amp circuit breakers three 40 amp circuit breakers I mean that's uh, they need a lot of juice uh, when they're producing the heat on demand uh, versus the traditional uh, tried and true I will call them uh, water heaters so I'm just I get it you know I a lot of people love them a lot of people love them and good for them uh, you know what? If Prep Center Bob uh, shows up here with a tankless electric water heater, I'm game. Uh, if Prep Center Bob yanks the water heater out of this mobile home and puts it on the side of the cabinet and hooks it up, so I, I'm game for that too. It's all good. Okay, enough about tankless water heaters, but yeah, I hear ya. Um, I don't think it would save any money. Uh, if you're gonna uh, get a quality name brand, you know, uh, uh, tankless water heater, but I'm just not, I'm just not sold on them. Oh yeah, let's talk about wood stoves again. <laughs> oh man, I love, I love fires with wood. I do, I do. I hear you. And uh, the best backup heat would definitely be a wood stove. I hear you. Um, if the end of the world as we know it uh, ends tomorrow, I won't be fine. <laughs> if, the, if the end of the world as we know it happens, don't come here. I'm not going to be fine. Don't come here. There's no wood heat here. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. I should have a wood stove as a backup. And I did mention that. If I've got, well, you know, I'm thinking a yurt, a vacation rental yurt. Uh, I could even do solar. That could be an off grid yurt as long as they don't use air conditioning and have a wood stove in there. And, that, you know, it's a backup just as good over there. I just don't want to be chopping wood as my primary source of heat uh, from here until whenever. And that's just, yep. But I do love wood stoves. I hear you. Okay, back to the back to drawing something. All right, this was the my original design, and um, so let's uh, let's just do another one. <laughs> and uh, believe me, I've uh, I bought this uh, this cabin five months ago. I have been looking at and doing this. You know, the reason why this one turned out halfway decent is because I've done it before. <laughs> All right, let's look at another design. Uh, the first idea, this is my first idea, was to put the ca the bathroom in the back, and then the rest of it would be a studio. Now, there are, I consider, two options of putting the bathroom in the back. Either, uh, either you do a, a wall, this is the back door, uh, the windows here, here, here. Uh, you can't. I can't change the windows or the doors. The windows and the doors are already there. So, um, and this window is eighty-six. It's seven feet 
uh, from the from that. So a bathroom, uh, somebody pointed out five feet is uh, standard for a tub, and uh, so I'm six feet tall. And I'm telling you, uh, one of those soaker tubs, those big claw foot, uh, that would be a dream. But, yeah, this isn't about dreams. This is about reality. Okay, so um, uh, six feet at least, you can, uh, somewhere between five and six feet back here. Um, so that's going to be your bathroom. Now, I could either take the bathroom wall all the way across... So the back door would just come into the bathroom, or you can take the wall right there, so that becomes a little hallway. And um, either way, then you then you need another door to go into this area. So I, the cheapest way to do it, um, as far as I was concerned, was to have the wall going up here. Okay, and speaking of cheap. Um, having all of the water on one wall internally because of, uh, you know, to help prevent freezing, that was uh, my consideration. So, uh, in that case, you would have uh, all of your water outlets would be on this wall for the bathroom and then on the other side for the kitchen. And uh, so then that kind of defines the rest of the area if you go that route. Now, uh, if you don't mind uh, water being on an outside wall and then uh, let's say the kitchen in this corner well that changes things if you don't mind running water lines all over the place you know the further you run the more water lines you have to buy the the more cost it is so um, so yeah a week ago I, <laughs> I was trying to come up with the uh, the most uh, efficient use of resources as far as water, but if it doesn't matter, if if the water can go on this wall and on the front wall, then uh, that's something else that is uh, being considered right now. All right, so with this uh, with this layout, you can go one of either two ways. Either this is where all of the water is, and your kitchen uh, becomes uh, this area. Or if you don't care and uh, and want water on this wall and then putting the kitchen up there, you could put the kitchen over here, you could put the kitchen over there. But uh, so yeah. So in the bathroom you've still got your shower and I would still like it to be wheelchair accessible. I know a clawfoot tub would not be that. I'm just uh, I'm just dreaming. Maybe I'll do that outside someday. Um, and then if you put the water along the back, uh, then you can have your commode, and I'll get into that, composting toilet, uh, under the window here, your little bathroom sink, and then here you could do uh, washer dryer, stackable, whatever, and that way the dryer, that can vent uh, right out the back. But the water well is, you know, 12 feet uh, in back of the uh, back door here. So, um, yeah. I'm going to have to talk about uh, septic and all that later. So, uh, yeah, if you don't care, then washer, dryer, uh, bathroom sink, commode, um, yeah, you're all good. And then, uh, well, you can tell I'm not as passionate about this layout as the first one. <laughs> Okay, let, you can put the kitchen over here, you know, in a wrap around, and then the bed would have to go over here. Or you can do the kitchen over here in a wrap around, and but then the bed would have to go, you know, over here. And um yeah, I don't know. That's why I that's why I settled on separating the bedroom and the kitchen. Um, uh, there are lots of windows, and like I said, when I take a nap, I like to have it dark, uh, and that's going to be much harder to do in a studio type setting. And I've um, I have to point out I lived in a studio, a 320 square foot studio in Chicago. 
Um, and so this is 350 square feet. So I know what it means to have everything all in one area. Although in that studio apartment, I only had one window. <laughs> the rest of that was enclosed. Here, it's all open to light and the, and the sun traveling during the day. So, uh, so that's why, that's why I settled on this one was to, uh, separate the areas, um, I've got a separate bedroom, and this bed is probably off, uh, it'd probably be more like this. But, yeah, I, I just, en I enjoyed having a bedroom and then a living area where I live. And, uh, I do think the kitchen would be, these are out of proportion. So, I still like this design the best. But you can see there are lots of other different options out there, and I guess we'll figure it out when we figure it out. Alright, so how do we solve the dilemma of not being able to put a clothes dryer in the middle of the cabin because it needs to vent? Well, we can make the bathroom wider instead of five, five and a half feet, you're thinking, you know, six and a half feet, so that you can put the shower along this wall. Um, 27 feet, let's say this is roughly, we'll call it eight and a half for the bed. Uh, my bed is about five and a half feet, so if I put it, and there is a window here, so if I, you know, and it's a little over six feet, yeah. And then, um, so that would be the bed. Uh, so let's call, and you have to factor in the width of the walls. Um, so let's say it's uh, six feet, so you can have a three foot shower and a three foot lane uh, for a wheelchair. Well, let's just call this seven feet. Uh, 15 and a half feet, uh, taken from 27 feet, so that leaves you 11 and a half, uh, feet for the kitchen area. And that's not bad. Alright, so, the bathroom, we got a door, and I would have it open outside, because that's a hallway, you know, and if you can have it open all the way so that it goes flat there, then yeah. That way the door is not taking up room inside of the bathroom. It's uh, it's in the hallway. Uh, now you can either do the shower in this corner, and then the commode, and then the sink, and then do the washer-dryer combo along here, or you can see there are many options uh, with, with that. Um, Let's see, so this would be roughly, you know, 6 feet by 10 feet, and that leaves 3 feet there. So you've got 10 feet to work with for a kitchen, and I, do, I still like the wraparound idea. The, uh, my last one was not in uh, proportion. I don't know if this one is either. <laughs> but, you know, you can have a refrigerator, uh a counter. Man, I'd much rather have a dishwasher than a clothes dryer, I'm just saying. You've got your sink with your water uh, on this one. Uh, let's say the, well, let's say the tub is there. And the uh, bathroom sink is there. And then you've got your commode. And then you've got your washer dryer. Or if it's stackable, this becomes a closet. You get what I'm saying here? Um, under the countertop here, you've got your water heater. Um, right here, perhaps, under the uh, window. I don't know. That might not be the best place for it. And then, yeah, you don't want your freezer next to your uh, oven. So, I don't know, maybe there can be a gap there, at least, before I get my freezer in there. Uh, something to think about. And then I've still got my uh, desk in this corner uh, with the chair. 
I can look out that window or I could put the chair here and look out that window. I can have a nice recliner here, you know, uh, nice little entry table. And then I still like the idea of some type of table or island here. And um, that's the fridge. So, yeah, that's uh, still dreaming. Put your ideas down below. It was a rainy day, not the best video. I did, because of the rain, I ran into town and did some errands, so not much accomplished. What else can I talk about? Uh, septic. I do not have a septic system, and a septic system is not part of this uh, project. So that can be something that comes later. Uh, a couple things about that. Uh, my water well is like 10, 12, 12 feet outside the back of the cabin. We'll see when the cabin gets here. Uh, you do not want a septic system within, you know, like at least 50 feet. So, I'm going to have to run piping at least 50 feet to a septic system. And you're, you're talking, uh, yeah, that's just not part of the scope of this project, maybe in the future. I have been using a composting toilet system similar to Off Grid with Doug and Stacy for a year and a half now. It's worked fine for me personally. I can see me using something like that for years and years to, to come. So not having a flush toilet is not going to stop me from moving into the cabin. Um, and don't get me, you know... Flushing a toilet, uh, yeah, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> Our culture has programmed us to believe that a flush toilet is the cleanest thing ever. And it's not. It's not. Every time you flush that toilet, you're putting millions, billions of particles up into the air. Some of those contain fecal matter. That's why I was a hotel manager back in the 90s. There was a whole bunch of gotcha journalism where they went into hotel bathrooms and they... Uh, uh, tested the walls and the sinks and everything for fecal matter and they found fecal matter. Why? Because there was a flush toilet in there. Uh, there, there is science to, uh, to back up, you know, what I'm doing with the composting toilet is cleaner than a flush toilet. So, I don't know. Just ask yourself, has our culture programmed us to believe something about flush toilets that isn't true? I, I'm just saying. Uh, so, yeah, no plans for a septic. I'm good on there. So, what about all the water, other water coming out of the shower, kitchen sink, bathroom sink, dishwasher, uh, washing machine? <laughs> I'm going to need a gray water system. That stuff, within 50 feet of the water well, as long as I use uh, uh, proper biodegradable uh, uh, plant friendly soaps that stuff will I'm going to be watering my future fruit trees, berries, food forest uh, that's where the, the gray water will go. You have to be a little more careful with stuff coming out of the kitchen sink if you have a lot of grease and animal material you don't want it just going out there attracting every raccoon and possum and rat and mouse in the area so sometimes you have to be more careful with uh what you're washing in the kitchen sink or in my case the dishwasher you might want a separate drainage for that and uh that's something we're going to keep in mind I, I you know that's uh we'll get to that when when we get to that i've given that a lot of thought i know in which directions i want to go and uh uh but still that's not something that's going to stop me from uh, moving in the cabin and starting to use it. There are temporary measures you can use uh, for uh, moving water around. All right, enough of that. <laughs> uh, it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow. I might take advantage of that and go into Russellville because I need to arrange for some porta bodies. Oh, dudes, and I'm just on the phone all day today. D uh, man, this was not planned ahead of time. This was not all planned ahead of time, so I, holy cow, stress! It's, it's going to be alright, it really is going to be alright. 
But yeah, an hour away, and the prices on it, I could almost do a do-it-yourself septic system to get a port. I don't even want to talk about it. So I might go into Russellville while it's raining tomorrow. Um, and yeah, we'll just go from there. I don't know when my next video will be. Thanks for watching. Take her easy, everybody. For me, please take her easy because I'm not taking her easy right now. And I'm not complaining.